Hey everyone, I'm Brian Parks, the CEO of Synapse Software, and in this video, I want to talk about anonymous access for Portal. Now, anonymous access is a feature that was built for Sharewell, I want to say 9.6, uh, somewhere around that time frame. Uh, those of you who have been using Sharewell for a long time can, can correct me if I'm, I'm wrong. Um, I should remember because back when I worked at Sharewell, I was actually on the team that, that built this feature, um, but I. I, I just don't remember, it's, it's been so long now. Uh, so anonymous access for portal is basically something that allows certain parts of the portal, aside from just the, the home page, uh, to be visible to users who haven't logged in yet. Uh, and, and the big uh, use cases for this feature were uh, the service catalog, knowledge, and other dashboards. Uh, so other dashboards were kind of already supported uh, prior to the introduction of this feature, uh, but the, the uh, explicit configuration for uh, anonymous access for dashboards was, uh, was added to, to make it a little clearer that, that dashboards could be uh, visible anonymously versus not visible anon anonymously. Uh, service catalog uh, was prior to this was not visible anonymously and wasn't really allowed to be uh, seen anonymously. Uh, you, you had to log in in order to view it. Um, but all of this kind of lies on the foundation of Sharewell's uh, security model. So it's basically, uh, there is an anonymous browser uh, security group that you're uh, quote unquote logged in as uh, before you actually log in. Um, and all security groups have certain permissions to certain business objects. Uh, so Sharewell just leverages that information uh, to determine if you can see certain business object information while you're not logged in. Um, so this video is mostly going to be demos. Uh, and the first demo is going to be configuring uh, knowledge for anonymous access. And in fact, if we look at portal, and this is, this is my portal. This is the portal that I built in my uh, customize your portal in 10 minutes video. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Uh, by default, the out of the box portal, uh, I didn't configure this, uh, already gives you access to uh, knowledge. So if you double click, uh, or let's see, there's supposed to be some way you can, you can get into these. Uh, but let's let's just search barcode because I know that works. And I click on that. I'm not late, logged in. I haven't logged in at all. You can see it, it still has the default avatar with the login button. Yet I can access knowledge. So out of the box, knowledge is already configured for anonymous access. Let's see how that's done. So I'm going to dive into admin. And I'm going to go to uh, security, edit security groups. And then when that loads, I'm going to pick anonymous browser. Because uh, as I mentioned, anonymous browser is the security group that people are logged in as um, when, they, um, when they haven't logged in yet, when they just visit the page. So then we'll go over to business objects and we'll pick knowledge article down in the K section here. There we go, knowledge article. And notice that this view permission is, is enabled. And if I scroll down through the different fields, you'll notice that it's on for every single field. That's very important because Sharewell has field level security, which means that any field that is uh, visible on a grid, form, anything like that, if the current logged in user doesn't have view access to that field, it won't show. So it's very important that all anonymous users have view access to both knowledge article and all of the fields underneath it. Uh, and if you think you might add fields in the future, that's what this new field option is for. So that new fields automatically get some permissions. So that's how, that's how um, knowledge 
is set up. So let's go over to another demo of the service catalog. Now, I actually have already configured service catalog for anonymous access. Uh, I actually did kind of a dry run of this video by accident. I didn't, I didn't realize that I wasn't recording yet. So I went through the whole demo only to find out that I, I, I wasn't recording. And let's, let's go back to, um, well, let's, let's, let's start with the portal, uh, and see what that looks like. So I've actually already gone into it. Nope. That's not what I wanted. Go back home, click service catalog. Now, in, if you're using out of the box content, you probably don't see that menu item there. We'll fix that in just a minute. So let's go account management, shareable self-service. Yep, so you can drill all the way down here. Of course, if I clicked that, it would actually require me to log in. That's because one, in order to submit an incident, we need to know who you are. And two, uh, in order to run a one step, you need to be logged in. To the system that's a that's a requirement of sharewell and has been a requirement since the very beginning um, so i'm not going to click that or it's going to redirect me to the rest api and force me to log in uh, but let's see how this is actually accomplished how this is configured in admin so we're going to start over in site manager and i'll pick the default site or my IT site. Now you'll notice that there is a menu option here, service catalog, uh, but again, out of the box, without being logged into the portal, you might not see it show up. So the, the reason for that is that out of the box on this service catalog item, both of these options, visible and, en and enabled, are set to logged in only. So they're only visible after you've already logged in. We're going to change them to always, so whether you're logged in or not, they will always show up. We also need to specifically tell the service catalog that it's allowed to be viewed anonymously. And that's, we, we click on, on this link here, it pulls up the properties for that particular uh, service catalog or action catalog. So finally, we want to configure a dashboard for anonymous access. And uh, what does that look like? All right, so we're going to go back to browser and mobile, go back to site manager. And edit the IT site. And once that comes up, we'll actually just look at the difference between the not logged in and uh, logged in dashboards. So let's go over to the dashboard manager and we'll actually click on, uh, where is it? I actually have to go back to the documentation to remember what, where this is. So uh, anonymous view of the dashboard. All right, so, yeah, dashboard properties. Okay, open a dashboard. Dashboard properties allow view access to anonymous users. So that's what we're looking for. So let's go back to admin. Let's open the dashboard. Dashboard properties, allow view access to anonymous users. Now this is actually a special case because it's the, the default dashboard for a portal. So we don't actually need to check that. Uh, it just, the system kind of knows that obviously if you're picking it for the not logged in dashboard, obviously it should be accessible to anonymous users. 
But if there were another uh, dashboard, I didn't make any changes, but okay. Uh, if there are another dashboard that we wanted to say link from the menu, we would need to set that it's visible anonymously, uh, visible to anonymous users, or the portal would try to make us log in first. Uh, so that's how you do that. So now let's go back to the slides. Okay, so some gotchas uh, for, for doing this. The first one is that Treble has field level, level permissions. So if you go through the portal and think you have everything configured correctly, but when you try to access either the service catalog or a knowledge article or any other business object that you want to uh, allow anonymous access to, if you get a permission denied, access denied, something along those lines, uh, make sure that you've allowed view access to all of those fields. Um, that's, that's definitely gotten me on more than one occasion. And uh, it's, it's easy to miss because there's that list of fields, especially for some business objects, is super long and it's, it's really easy to miss something. So just go through that list and make sure that view access, at least view access, has been enabled for every single field. Um, there may be some fields, if they're not visible, you might be able to get away with not uh, giving view permission for that. Uh, but there may be some fields that are used kind of behind the scenes. And if the currently logged in user doesn't have access to those, it, things will break. So that's, that's something to be aware of. Okay, next thing is that one steps always require authentication. So if you try to uh, run a one step anonymously, it's not going to work. There's some licensing implications uh, there, but the, the, the simple version of it is that in order to run a one step, you have to be logged in. Uh, and in fact, the portal may force you to log in before you even try to run a one step. Um, just be aware of that. Anything that's behind a one step will require authentication. So the next one is that dashboards don't require authentication, uh, but the data might. So uh, even if you enable uh, anonymous access to uh, dashboard, make sure that any data that it's trying to surface is also accessible anonymously. Uh, so let's say you have a, a dashboard that shows the number of incidents. If you don't give the anonymous user access to incident in any form, that widget might not work. There might be some problems with that. That's all for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video, share, subscribe, and let me know in the comments or shoot me an email what topics you want to see in future videos. Have a great day.